Good morning and welcome to our service of worship this morning. Welcome out there in Zoom land. We hope you are all enjoying this sunny, beautiful spring day. We are reminded that we stand and we worship and we sit in our homes on the traditional territories of the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, the Huron and the Wendat people. May we be blessed by their knowledge here in this place and in our homes. Lorna has something to say. Somebody else has something to say down there too. <laughs> As you all know, the garage sale is uh, coming up this weekend. And I'd just like to sh uh, thank the 16 people who came on Monday to help price. It went really well and we got so much done. It was a, a wonderful, uh, fun day. Um, Wednesday is the last day to donate anything for the garage sale. Um, we still need more help on the sign up sheet is out there. Friday morning, if you can lend a hand um, setting up, we've uh, from nine till one. Last year we had a lot of people and we were done by I think 12 o'clock. So um, I'm hoping for more signing up for that. And uh, as well as the day of the garage sale and the cleanup at the end of the day. Cash in hand, we have uh, 300, uh, 300, oh my goodness, $3,500 cash in hand for the garage sale at this point. So there it is. And there's a lot of stuff out there to be picked up today, so that's going to just bring it up even higher. Um, also, uh, Nicholson's Point, trillions are spent spectacular and if any of you have never gone out to Nicholson's Point and driven right to the very end you should do so it's, um, the trilliums are spectacular it's like a field of, of trilliums so um, make that a, a drive for you today thank you there's other fun things happening this week uh, many of you know Florence Niven and she has written a book the book is called step into this day thoughts on connection anyone who is able can come and support uh florence perhaps uh purchase uh, her beautiful book it ha it's happening on tuesday night in the back of the sanctuary here and in the narthex we would like to celebrate this gifted author among us so plan on doing that th tuesday night seven to nine Something else coming up uh, that we're just starting to hear about is the handbell concert. There is a handbell gathering of all kinds of ringers that will be held at St. Lawrence College on June 2nd and 3rd. And the finale of that event is June the 3rd in the evening, a concert that we can all attend. The tickets are how much, Amy? $20. It would be lovely to have a big support group from Edith Rankin since it's easy for us to get there. And Amy's going to be selling tickets today and there will be tickets available through the whole month on Sunday after church. So mark that on your calendar and, and come out and support. Amy also mentioned that if there's any of you who would like to work as ushers at that concert, ushers, directors, there's a whole bunch of little tasks that need to be done. Speak to Amy or any one of the ringers and uh, they'll find you a job. I'm, I'm sure sure the final message is uh, I think many of you are aware that Marlene and Brian McCracken are at the coronation have been in England and were at, indeed at the coronation last week last night yesterday um, if you watched City TV news on Friday night you caught a glimpse of Marlene. Somebody else was being interviewed and there was a whole banner of Canadian flags and right there behind the left shoulder of the person being interviewed was Marlene in her lilac jacket. I'm sure you can all picture it. So I know that they are, have been having a wonderful time. If you'd like to hear about their travels, plan on coming to the fellowship breakfast to be held at the end of the month, May 28th, to hear directly from Brian and Marlene about this wonderful trip. Sounds like a good time. We'll look for forward to hearing from them. Is there any news, other news among us? This is the life and work of Edith Rankin Memorial United Church. On Sunday, we gather to worship. Let us worship God. We light our Christ candle this morning in honor of that coronation and add our blessing to King Charles. We also remember this week the death of the great Canadian Gordon Lightfoot and honor his light that he offered 
to our country and to the world. We also light our Christ candle this morning. Many of you have seen the police activity around the church with the barge in the water this week. And we ask that God's blessing be with all of the families who have been affected by tragedy and, and by the tragedies that are here within our midst. And we also light our Christ candle today in honor of our classics, all those who have dedicated their lives and commitments to this church and to sharing the good news of life and light and hope and peace with all the world. We hope that you will come out this afternoon to honor them. Come, all ye people. call to worship this morning we're using a blessing written by the Irish priest and poet John O'Donohue and I invite you to share with me as you see it on the screen before you may you awaken to the mystery of being here and enter the quiet immensity of your own presence may we have joy May you respond to the call of your gift and find the courage to follow its path. May warm the heart to keep our presence of peace away, and may anxiety never linger about us. May your outer dignity mirror an inner dignity of your soul. May you take time to celebrate the quiet miracles that seek no attention. May we be consoled in the secret symmetry of our souls. May we experience each day as a sacred gift woven around the heart of the wonder. Our centering prayer this morning is a call and response prayer. And we're blessed with the creativity of Paul Curry, who has put our words into a beautiful video this morning. I will say the word and you will echo it back as you see it on your screen. Let us pray. God 
God's people can say, I'd like to invite our children and our youth and our young people to come forward for us this morning. Good morning. Can I sit next to you? Thank you. My name's Michelle. What's your name? Lauren. So nice to have you at church this morning. Would you like to meet some other friends? Can you tell her what your name is? My name is Ruby. Amelia. Amelia. Yeah. Would you like to be friends this morning? We would love that. Yeah. Yes, love? And Catherine's here too. Is she sitting in the back today? Awesome. I hope that she sends us a big hug from all the way back there. So today, sometimes when we're at church, we learn special words, and today our word is blessing. Can I hear you all say blessing together? Blessing. What do you think the word blessing means? Do you think you know what that word means? Uh... Want some of the other friends to give us a hint? Yeah, give us a hint. It's, it's sort of like a... Well, it's sort of blessing means that means your luck from kind of means sort of like luck from God or something like that. From God. Yes, that's exactly what blessing means. And today we're doing a very special blessing because when we read from a book here at church, what's that big book called again? Does anyone remember? The Bible. The Bible. Can I hear you all say the Bible? The Bible. That's that big book that we read about from stories written a long time ago, but they still help us live our lives today. And in that big book, what's it called again? The Bible. The Bible. Yes, from that big book, there's a story that we're going to hear about today. And it's Jesus saying, let the little children come unto me, and I will bless them. You're right. So who are the little children who are here today? Yay! So you get a special blessing. So how do you think we might bless people? What do you think we might do to bless them? Any ideas? Will we tickle their feet? Would that feel like a blessing? Yeah. Would we give them a hug? Would that feel like a blessing? Sometimes it would. When Jesus was with all his friends and he said, let the little children come to me, he said, I'm gonna take my hand and I'm gonna place it upon their heads. Can I put my hand on your head? And he would bless them like this. Can I put my hand on your head? Mm -hmm. And he would bless mm -hmm. them like this. Can you come a little bit closer, Amelia? Oh, yes, you got blessed too. And so I'm wondering if you would like to bless someone. Because I'd like a blessing. Am I too old to be a little child? Kind of. Kind of. <laughs> That's what I was afraid you might say. But you know what? God says that we are all God's children. And so however old we are, we get to have a blessing. So would you be willing to bless me? Can you put your hand on my head? Oh, can you bless me too? It's my favorite part. Can you stretch? How long are your arms? Oh, they're long enough for a blessing. Well, do you know what? Today, you are the special leaders of the church. And what's our special word today? Blessing. Blessing. Can I hear you all say it? Blessing. Well, I want to know if you would like to do some blessing today. Because today, not only are we honoring our young people, but we're also honoring, what's the opposite of young? Oh. You got it. Well, everyone. Our old people, too. Everyone. Everyone. Are you saying everyone here is old? 
No, I'm just saying everyone here is getting a blessing. Everyone here is getting a blessing? Well, that's a beautiful idea, Amelia. Today, we're honoring people who we call the classics. Can I hear you say the classics? Classics. The classics are over 80 years old. Can you imagine being that old? Well, there are some out here. We want to ask you if you're a classic, we want you to put your hand up or stand up, whatever's most comfortable for you, because our children want to bless the classics. Look at them all there for. So, in or what we need to do is we need to rub our hands together so that we can make beautiful love between our hands. Yes, and then we're going to put them out and we're going to say all together. We say it. We bless you. All of those classics, because those are our parents and our grandparents who love us and who teach us how to be faithful and loving disciples of Jesus. And so today, we want to thank you for being a blessing, but for also for blessing our classics. Can you say a prayer with me? Let's fold our hands like this so they're not busy. And then we say, dear God, dear God, thank you for your love. Thank you for your love. And for blessing us. And, and for blessing us. As we bless others. As we bless others. With love. And hope. And hope. And peace. And peace. And joy. And joy. Amen. Amen. Oh, you guys are awesome. You're going to get to go downstairs and have a fun time with Miss Ruth, and we'll see you after church. And we're blessed with a beautiful gift of music this morning by Kathy Lee. We rise again. Today we are blessed 
to celebrate New Members Sunday once again here at Edith Rankin. And so I'm going to invite Alexandra and Anthony to make their way forward. I think Alexandra might still be in the nursery. She'll, there she comes. I just want to give you a little bit of joy and background about our new members this morning. Alexandra is a wills and estates lawyer in Cunningham Swan here in Kingston. And prior to moving to Kingston in December of 2020, she practiced law in Oakville and in Toronto. And I'm going to get my glasses and then I'll be able to tell you actually. <laughs> Ooh, there we go. Alexandra graduated from Queen's Law in 2010, and she and Anthony lived in Kingston before and knew that they liked it. And they are happy to return to Kingston with their three children, our beautiful twins, Catherine and Amelia, uh, who are attending grade two at J.R. Henderson Public School. You're in grade two, yes. And Jeremy, who's going to be turning three and baptized here this summer at Edith Rankin. Alexandra grew up in Coquitlam, a suburb of Vancouver, and she was a member at Como Lake United Church during her childhood. She and Anthony met at St. A's University in Sackville, New Brunswick. Uh, prior to moving to Kingston and joining Edith Rankin, Alexandra and Anthony were members of Eastminster United and later Windermere United in Toronto. Anthony grew up in Toronto and was a member of Kingston Road United Church during his childhood, and Alexandra and Anthony were married at Kingston Road. Anthony's parents, Greg and Sonia, recently moved from Toronto to Kingston as well, and Sonia has also started attending Edith Rankin. Anthony has a master's degree in Canadian history and was working on a PhD when he decided that he would rather become a police officer. Anthony is now a police officer here with our Kingston police, currently working as a detective in the fraud unit. Prior to joining the Kingston police, Anthony was a police officer with Toronto. Both have been raised in the United Church. Alexandra and Anthony are happy to have found a welcoming United Church for themselves and their families. Alexandra and Anthony particularly enjoy services featuring lots of music and thought-provoking sermons, which they have found at Edith Rankin. Amelia and Catherine enjoy getting to know Ruth, the Sunday school teacher, and Jeremy loves the toddler room. We welcome you and we're grateful that you are here. I have a few questions for you this morning. Alexandra Manthorpe and Anthony Hampton, do you desire to covenant with the faith family of Edith Rankin Memorial United Church and be part of this community of disciples who are justice seeking, kindness loving, and walking humbly with God? I do. I do. Will you commit to sharing your spiritual gifts for the blessing of this whole family? I will. And what will you offer to God and to this church family with this covenant? I will commit to share my heart openly, to listen to God intentionally, and to tell the truth in love. I promise to be a faithful disciple here in this place and wherever I find myself. And we'd just like to hear from you. Why have you chosen us, this wonderful family here at Edith Rankin? <laughs> I think like many, we kind of got out of the habit of attending church during COVID. So yeah. we, oh. So we wanted to start again. Also, we needed a way to entertain our children on Sunday mornings. I think we found it very welcoming here. And uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's a pleasure to come on Sunday mornings. We're grateful to have you. 
Anthony and Alexandra are transferring their membership from Windermere United Church in Toronto to join us here at Edith Rankin in Kingston. I would invite the congregation to please stand and I would ask you these following questions. Members of Edith Rankin United Church, have, we have heard the commitments and vows of Alexandra and Anthony. Are you prepared as a church family to welcome them into this community of faith? We are prepared and to welcome them all into the Edith Rankin family. Are you willing to accept the spiritual gifts that they offer to share and in return, share your gifts of inclusion, acceptance, and welcome. We are willing to accept who they are individually and the gifts that they offer to share. We are also committed to sharing our very best gifts of inclusion, acceptance, and welcome. Alexandra and Anthony, Edith Rankin Memorial United Church is blessed to have you join our family of faith. We're delighted to receive you as full voting members into this church. And with this certificate comes all of the blessings and responsibilities of Christian membership within Edith Rankin and the United Church of Canada. And to you, we say, Welcome to Edith Rankin. We are blessed indeed. Let's sing halle, hallelujah. <laughs> we have certificates and name tags here for you, for both of you. Please be seated. We are a family that grows together and we are grateful to welcome you within us. This morning, we also have a double blessing because I want to share this opportunity of storytelling that we read from that big book. What's it called again? <laughs> and also from our own lives and our own hearts. And so we are blessed to have the DeYoung family who's been attending here since uh, last fall at Edith Rankin. And this morning, Mom Heidi, wife Heidi, also known as the Reverend Dr. Heidi DeYoung, is going to bless us with story, and with song and share our message with us. We are delighted to be able to welcome you to share the good word and to, for your beautiful family to be part of our community of faith here. So Heidi, we welcome you. Oh, that's so much better. That feels great. I like preaching with my shoes off. I can tell already. Well, hello, and it is so good to be with you here today. It's a little emotional. I'm just acknowledging that in this presence, but um, today's scripture reading is going to come partway through the message, all right? So the, the, the message is going to lead up to it. You got a hint of it in the children's message earlier, so just letting you know that we'll get there, I promise. But I wanted to start with a little bit of background on my work um, and the things that I've been focusing on a lot in my ministry the last number of years. So I've been a pastor in the Christian Reformed Church of North America for over 17 years, and the last 10 of those, I pastored a church just a little north and east of here, Westside Fellowship Christian Reformed Church. And like all denominations and all congregations, 
we've had we've experienced our share of conflict right i think we can all say as we look back on our histories as denominations congregations families individuals we have conflict in our histories and in our present and the last not the last congregation i served but the the one before that when we um we were in west michigan for several years and i served a congregation there in many ways beautiful i don't regret my time there in any way it was a complicated congregation one church but three different congregations lots of staff lots of church politics and there was so much tension and conflict going on there that i i couldn't figure out which end was up and I think when we are in the midst of conflict and when we're anxious, we tend to view other people as the enemy, right? And we, we do a couple different things. We, we put on armor to defend ourselves against what we perceive as the attacks of other people, or we take up our swords, our weapons to, to you know, we use our words to try to prove other people wrong or humiliate them in some way. There's so many things we do in the midst of conflict when we are anxious that hurt others and ourselves. I experienced that a lot in that congregation. I saw it in other people, but I also participated it in it myself. And as we moved here in 2012, so that I could become a pastor here in Kingston, I just, I knew there had to be a different way. There had to be a better way to navigate the inevitable conflict that we go through as church communities. And so I entered several different learning communities and relationships and training opportunities to learn how to, to lead better than I'd been led and to lead better than I'd been leading, to learn how to be with people in community, in the midst of conflict. To put away my arms, my weapons, and my armor, my shields, and to be present with other people. And in the midst of that, to, to bear witness to Jesus, who is right there in the midst of us, at all times, even in the midst of conflict. Matthew 18, that, that passage that says, wherever two or three are gathered, there am I, Jesus says, in the midst of them. We often use that passage in hospital rooms or at poorly attended prayer meetings, right? <laughs> but that passage is actually, that, that verse is in the context of talking about conflict. When two or three people are gathered and there are difficult conversations going on, Jesus is there. And when we put our focus on Jesus and, and love for one another, we can have those conversations in different ways. And so I did a doctoral project and wrote a dissertation entitled, Truthing in Love, Engaging Conflict with the Disarming Love of God. And the central image of that dissertation came from a vicar in, in the Anglican Church in London named Samuel Wells. And he wrote a little piece where he talked about Jesus' arms. And he said, at two of the most intimate and pivotal moments in Jesus' life, he had no use of his arms what i hadn't thought about this before but samuel wells said at his birth jesus arms were tucked next to his body in swaddling clothes right twice in luke's gospel it says that jesus would be found in swaddling clothes and the angel said this will be a sign to you he couldn't use his arms they were tucked away but then also at his death his arms were stretched out on the horizontal beam of a cross and nailed there. And as he died, he had no use of his arms. And that image of Jesus not using his arms to fight back against those who were killing him 
and not participating in the cycle of revenge and violence that this world is so used to. That image is the image of love, of God disarmed. Samuel Wells says, Jesus is God disarmed. The disarmed and disarming love of God. So the violence that came upon Jesus, he did not pass on to other people or pass back to the ones who were hurting him in forgiveness. He turned the whole mechanism around to show that love is not a battlefield, <laughs> that loving one another isn't a game of winning and losing, that when we are in conflict with our fellow human beings, we need to, we need to put away our swords and our shields and engage one another with disarming love. Oh, that our, our swords would be turned into plowshares and our spears into pruning hooks. In all of our difficult conversations, whatever they are, whether that be about doctrine or about whose turn it is to do the dishes, we need to put away the swords and the shields and to be truly present with one another without attacking or defending, fists down, arms down. We need to engage one another with the disarming love of God. And the congregation I served most recently for the last 10 years, that was the work that we did together. We worked to become more and more of a congregation that wasn't fighting the way we typically see fights happen. And they are continuing that work, even though I am no longer their pastor and I'm proud of them. The disarming love of God, yes. And a little story. My best friend Jenna is a pastor in West Michigan. She has a parishioner in her congregation named Diane, whose adult son, Chad, died this past Good Friday, right around noon. And Diane texted her pastor, Jenna, saying how comforted she was. Chad died of lung cancer that had metastasized to his brain. That was his story. But she said she was so comforted by the fact that Chad died on Good Friday, right around the time that people all around the world were, were remembering Jesus' death. And these are Diane's words. She writes, he passed at 1210 into Jesus' arms. The same arms outstretched on the cross on that Good Friday. I don't believe that was by accident. I believe God chose to bring him home around noon on Good Friday, assuring me that Chad was in his arms, that Jesus carried him to his father saying, this is one of my sheep. Jenna told me that story on Easter Sunday morning, and I felt both convicted and healed by what that, by that story. Because you see, yes, Jesus is God disarmed, but Jesus is also God with physical arms. The arms of Jesus welcome Chad into the life to come. But we also read all through the Bible, the stories of the arms of Jesus, how he, with his hands and arms, fed the 5,000, how he touched sick people and made them well, touched dead people and made them alive again how he, with his mighty hand, the finger of his mighty hand, wrote on the ground and warded off the stones that were coming at this woman, how he, with his outstretched arm, rescued Peter from the waves of his doubt. And Jesus' arms were arms of embrace. And so the scripture passage this morning, my youngest was assigned to read today, so that worked out really well. So Zoe's going to come up here as she does. This is Zoe. She's in grade six, and she's been helping out and participating in the children's ministry here. She had to stay in the service today. 
and she's okay with that too. Um, the rest of my family, you may have Samara a few weeks ago sang for, for you, um, and my middle daughter Naomi is in grade nine. My husband Tim is also an ordained minister in the Christian Reformed Church and works as a spiritual care practitioner at KGH. So we're so happy to be with you. So Zoe's gonna read our scripture passage today. Mark 10, 13 to 16. People were bringing children to Jesus in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, let the children come to me. Do not stop them for it is, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms laid his hands on them and blessed them. Thanks be to God for his word. Thanks, Zoe. Jesus is God disarmed, but Jesus is also God with arms, with arms of embrace. And that is what we long for as humans and as followers of Jesus. We long for the embrace of Jesus and by extension, the embrace of the body of Christ. We don't want to just be a part of communities that are free of swords and shields that you know, tolerate one another without hitting each other. No, we want to be a part of communities of radical acceptance and embrace. And that is what I hear when people join this community as I've been at a couple of new member services already, that people have experienced so much welcome and embrace here at Edith Rankin. My family and I are not becoming members today. Our ordination and our um, general in-between time phase of our life is, is keeping us from that at this time, but we are so glad to be a worshiping part of Edith Rankin. And I just want to talk about, as I close, a couple of ways that we have experienced the embrace of this community. First of all, um, we, as, as Reverend Michelle mentioned, started attending here in the fall last year, and we've been coming for about a month, and so I set up a meeting with Reverend Michelle and was like, let's just get to know each other. I set up that meeting for Saturday, November 26th, and two days before that meeting was American Thanksgiving, our family's American, and um, my sister, who lives in St. Paul, Minnesota, went on a 5K fun run, and she was running and just, 43 years old, she had a seizure, went down, and by that evening we found out that she had a brain tumor. And uh, my whole world turned upside down. My sister and I are very, very close. And so whereas my plan had been to come to talk to Michelle, just you know, get to know each other as fellow clergy and get to know each other's stories, I walked into her office and I said, Michelle, I need a pastor right now. And what beautiful timing that after, you know, 16 years of pastoring, I found myself in a place where I could have a pastor, someone to embrace me. And of course she embraced me with her physical arms, but that whole conversation was embrace. She listened deeply. As I came here, I was like, oh God, she's a good preacher. Let's please let her be a good like pastoral caregiver as well. Yes, amazing. She listened. You listened. The way that she prayed for me, I will never forget. Embrace. And the way that she gently referred to my sister and the hopes and the fears and the worries in messages and prayers subtly, graciously throughout the course of the next several months, embrace. So thank you. Thank you for being my pastor. But the other way that we've experienced embrace is through your affirming ministry here at Edith Rankin. 
our family believes with strength that variation in sexual orientation and gender identity is just part of the beautiful complexity of God's good creation. And so as a pastor in a midlife crisis trying to figure out which end is up, I'm looking for places to pastor and to preach and to teach, to worship and to work, to parent and to love in places where the position of, of the, the posture and the position is, is in line with what I believe is God's heart and the truth of scripture. And that is the affirming position. And so not only to hear stories of so many of you of welcome and embrace, but also to watch the affirming team here work those stories and, and this work into the life of the community. For our family, this is embrace. Sometimes I'm weeping, weeping, weeping as you share your stories. Thank you. Let the children come to me, Jesus said. All the children, whether young or old, all the different colors of the children, all the different orientations and identities of the children, let all the children come to me. Do not get in their way, for it is to such that the kingdom of God belongs. And he took them up in his arms of embrace, and he laid his hands on them, and he blessed them. The embrace of Jesus is something that we read about in scripture. It's something that we experience in communities of radical acceptance. And it is something that we look forward to when we think of that time when we will take the journey from being a saint below to being a saint above. When we move from seeing only through a glass darkly to seeing face to face. When we transition from being embraced by the people of God to being directly embraced by the God of all people. Just as Chad was embraced when he left this life this past Good Friday and entered the life to come. My middle daughter, Naomi, many years ago, when she was quite little, wrote a little lullaby about Jesus' arms, and she gave me permission to share it with you today. And it's a lullaby that I think can bless us into sleep. So if you need to take a little nap afterwards, maybe that's okay. <laughs> but it's also a lullaby that I imagine could work well as someone is breathing their last breath. So I'm going to make my way over to the piano just to share this short lullaby with you. Sleep in Jesus' arms, sleep in Jesus' arms, sleep with him who makes you strong sleep with him who sings this song sleep with the lord our god sleep in jesus arms sleep in jesus arms sleep with him who makes you strong Sleep with him who sings this song. Sleep with the Lord our God. And all God's people can say, Amen. Friends, I want you to take your arms and place them by your sides and imagine that you are wrapped in swaddling clothes. Friends, I want you to take your arms and I want you to outstretch them. I want you to remember all the time that harm has come to you. 
Friends, Heidi, can you stand up? I want you to encircle your arms around Heidi and offer blessing and gratitude and disarmed love that is deep and pure when we say thank you for sharing your heart, your story, your wisdom, and God's grace. And all God's people can say, Amen. We're going to invite you to sing when you find your voices. Be still, my soul. It's 652 in Voices United or on your monitors. For our prayers of the people, it's going to be a call and response, just like our centering prayer. We started with words, and in this prayer, we ask for God's blessing upon people. As I say names, I would invite you to echo them back. Will you pray with me? Holy God, with outstretched arms and outstretched hearts, we come before you humbled with the courage to ask for blessing. We lift up all of your people. 
we ask for your blessing on this day for Alexandra, Alexandra, Anthony, Anthony. Reverend Dr. Heidi, Dr. Heidi. And Samara, Samara. Zoe, Zoe. Naomi, Naomi, Tim. Knowing he's already blessed, we ask for your blessing on Chad. Yeah. Knowing that we are already blessed, we ask for your blessing upon us. And all God's people can say, Amen. Amen. Our chancel choir in the direction of Kim Varney. What a friend we have in Jesus. As we receive our offering today, we want to share our gratitude for all the ways that you offer your gifts to this mission and ministry here at Edith Rankin with the mission and service of the United Church so that we might continue this work here and around the world. If you are new, we have a 
practice of offering our offering before worship. Um, we invite you to do so as you come in or at the end of worship as it is comfortable. Let's stand and sing our offertory dedication, Grant us God the grace of giving. God, we ask for your blessing upon these gifts and upon all who have given, so that we might be disarmed and live our best lives as disciples of your love and your grace, your forgiveness and your mercy. Might we offer the best of ourselves to this mission and this ministry so that everyone everywhere might feel the embrace of your blessing this day. And for that, all God's people can say, Amen. Amen. Let's share together our closing hymn. We'll sing, Let My Spirit Always Sing. Friends, I want you to open your arms in a symbol of embrace and turns towards Kim Barney. <laughs> On Tuesday, Kim is going to become a Canadian citizen. And we say, welcome aboard. It is a gift and a blessing to have you here at Edith Rankin for all that you share. And now to be part of the Canadian family is blessing upon blessing. We have indeed been blessed this morning with the gift of wisdom and joy and compassion and kindness. Might you take our blessing and go into the world to be who you are, for it is indeed blessing. Would you bless our people? Yes. Yeah.
<laughs> Do I need a microphone? Okay. Yeah, let's put this on. Yeah. All right. Uh, one of the blessings I love to give is this one. Friends, may God go before you to lead you. May God go behind you to watch over you, above you to protect you, beneath you to give you support, next to you to be your friend. May God be within you to give you strength. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Go in peace. And all God's people can say, Amen. Amen.